All right, hello everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for our Knauss Fellows Lecture Series today. Um, I'd like to begin by introducing Stacy Weinstock. Actually, just for the online audience. Yeah. So. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Stacy recently completed an MS from the Environmental Studies program at the College of Charleston in June 2018. For her graduate thesis, she focused on social science in recreational fisheries management. But ever the multitasker, she simultaneously worked at South Carolina Sea Grant Consortium and the Nature Conservancy, focusing on projects concerning coastal issues. So with that, please welcome Stacy. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about my graduate research as Katie, thank you for the wonderful introduction, uh, focused on trip satisfaction in the South Carolina for higher fishery. Uh, now this might already cause you to have two questions. What is trip satisfaction and what is the for hire industry? So with my next slide, I'll answer that first question. Uh, it's uh, kind of this guy here. So trip satisfaction is essentially what makes you happy while you're fishing? And in the context of my talk, that's what it will be. And it'll be in regards to a fishing trip. This guy's going to his local watering hole and he looks excited about it. So um, I wanted to show another example of trip satisfaction, which uh, as you can see, this guy here found a great snook and it's gone. <laughs> Short-lived trip satisfaction, but that's the risk that you take when you're recreational fishing. Uh, so with that, I also wanna talk about the marine for hire industry. So that would be the second question you would have. Now the for hire industry is essentially charter fishing. It's part of the recreational fishing business. You would hire a vessel to take you out fishing. How many people in this room have gone charter fishing? Awesome, great crowd. All right, so <laughs> there's two, two types of charter fishing or for hire fishing. There are private charters and there are head boat charters. Now a private charter is a bit more of an expensive, intimate fishing experience. Well, you will pay a you will pay per trip to go out. So that will be probably a flat rate. And then there'll also be a bit more of a little bit control of where you're going and having a little bit more of a private party sort of experience versus a head boat is you pay the price per head. So when you go out on a head boat, it tends to be a bigger boat, you know, a bunch of people on board, you know, not yet your best friends, but maybe by the end of the trip, depending on what you catch. Uh, a little bit more of an economical experience as well for when you're fishing. Now, you might ask, why trip satisfaction in the for hire industry? Why is this important? Well, the charter fishing industry is a very important economic industry. Uh, actually, according to a Northeast Fishery Science Report, Center report from 2013, in the Northeast alone, the charter fishing industry generates about $140 million in revenue. So as you can imagine, reflected throughout the rest of the US, it's a pretty big industry, a lot of money, a lot of money going in. Um, and there's been a lot of research on trip satisfaction in the freshwater for hire industry and the recreational fishing industry, but not as much concentration in the marine for hire. So that's kind of me, why I went about doing this research uh, to address this data gap in the trip satisfaction for the for hire industry. And part of that is, you know, the more data, the more informed management can be the more informed fisheries managers can be to manage the resource as well as the industry and the stakeholders to better manage for overall. Now for my research, I focus on black sea bass in South Carolina because I went to graduate school in South Carolina. So I provided a very convenient uh, opportunity and they're a really popular recreational fish in the for hire industry in South Carolina. They're also a commercial fishery. It's a pot fishery down there uh, well, along the entire East Coast or not the South Coast. South Atlantic coast. Uh, they're typically found inshore, offshore. They're part of the grouper family, the Serenidae family. And they're really easy to catch. It's more or less a bycatch or byproduct of when you're going out recreational fishing. So you drop a line, you catch a sea bass. They're very aggressive, they're very hungry fish, and they're very hardy fish as well. Now the opportunity for my research came in August 2016. The black sea bass fishery has had some, has some historical issues in terms of overfishing. And in 2006, they closed the fishery and then they reopened, they determined it stabilized in 2013 after a 10 year rebuilding plan. Uh, there was some fishing along the way, but for the recreational fishery, they reduced the bag limits, which is how many 
fish you can take as an individual angler for those who don't go recreational fishing. Um, and this allowed for an opportunity for research for trip satisfaction. So they increased the bag limit from five fish per day to seven fish per day. However, they didn't increase the size limit. So for the uh, recreational black sea bass fishery, it's a minimum harvest size limit. You can only harvest a fish that's 13 inches or larger. And they were aware that people weren't really catching the size limit, but they wanted to see they provided greater bag limits to have social effects. So that kind of ended up informing my research and creating this opportunity through the South Atlantic Fishery and working with the South Atlantic Fishery Management Council. So this led to my research questions. Do black sea bass bag limits affect trip satisfaction? And what factors affect trip satisfaction in South Carolina for a higher fishery? Now for my target population, I focused on the customers of the four higher of the four higher fishery in South Carolina and the captains and crew. So I figured it was good. Those are the people who are out there. Those are the people experiencing on a, well, the crew are the ones experiencing it on a day-to-day -day basis and the customers, those are your, your customer service. That's the person who's tr trying to, you're trying to determine whether they are satisfied when they're fishing. So they were a large, they were the main target of my, my research. For this, I did a multi-method approach of qualitative and quantitative data. Uh, my qualitative data informs my quantitative data. So I did observations, which is participant observation, and I did quality, I did interviews with the captains and crew, and I created a questionnaire survey for the customers of the poor hire industry. Uh, that, that survey was really the meat of my project, and it focused on the catch dependent factors because depend, the literature says most trip satisfaction derives from catch dependence. So that's what you're catching and whether you're having a fight with a fish, which is when you're pulling on the rod and you bring in nothing or you bring in something. So it really kind of derives satisfaction. Um, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a sort of a taste of what my survey, the main part of my survey was, which is these catch dependent factors. I use these from um, Ditton and Fedler who are a lot, and a couple other um, very paramount recreational trip satisfaction uh, literature. And these were really the, the take homes that in the literature, whether you catch a fish, you take home fish, you have an exciting fight with the fish, or if you catch a trophy fish. With the black sea bats, it's not a trophy fishery, which was reflected in my data <laughs> very greatly. <laughs> um, so my study area was in South Carolina. I focused in Myrtle Beach, Charleston, Hilton Head, because South Carolina is one of the high tourism destination. Now we have a 15, not we, I'm not in South Carolina anymore, but we have, South Carolina has a $15 billion tourism industry. And Myrtle Beach, Charleston, Hilton Head are high tourist destinations. They're also where they have the highest concentration of snapper grouper permits. So I worked with the South Atlantic Fishery Management Council to determine where the density of snapper grouper permits were for four higher vessels. And these are the three locations that I ended up targeting. Now, for a little bit about my methods. So for those who might not be familiar with social science, I did participant observation, which is essentially observing while on board. I observed on private charters and headboat charters. I did half and half to try and even out the data as much as I could. Um, I also quantified what I was seeing. So I was quantifying the number of bites I saw when I was fishing or when I was observing other people fishing. Uh, the fight with fish, I tried to quantify the quantity of consumable fish caught, so those that could take home depend on the size limit, and then also the whether how many fish they took home in general, not just specific to black sea bass. Uh, as you can imagine, when I'm one person and there's 100 people on board, it gets a little difficult to quantify, but I did my best in that opportunity. But observing really does inform your quantitative data. Being able to sort of pair that with your questionnaire survey um, and that information that you obtain it really does is very helpful. Also conducted interviews with captains and crew. Uh, these semi-structured interviews are more of a loosely guided format, and that way it can be more conversational. Depending on your talking to, an interview could last anywhere from five minutes to uh, 45 minutes. So it really just kind of depended on who, who you were chatting with. Uh, now the, for the meat of my project was my questionnaire survey. I developed it uh, and did a ton of outreach. A lot of that outreach involved working directly with the captains themselves. They really worked well with me. They were very supportive of this research actually. And I got to uh, advertise, get to, 
I was allowed to like advertise on board as well and provided envelopes, mailed envelopes, stamped envelopes for them to uh, mail me back completed surveys. I also had the sample South Atlantic Fishery Council uh, pr act, uh, promote on their webpage and I got some unintentional help as well. So I ended up on the front page of the Carolina Sportsman, <laughs> which is awesome. I posted in their classified section and it does really help that my for my survey, I entice people to take it with a reward. So if you take the survey, you can you would be automatically enrolled into a, a rally for or a raffle for a hundred dollar gift card. And I guess somebody saw it and they put it on the on the front page for a couple of days. That really boosted my survey participants. <laughs> so I really appreciated that. Um, I also did surveys in person as well. That was actually the majority of my survey work. I like when I said I worked really close to the captains, one captain would text me when they were coming in, when I lived, I lived in Charleston at the time, and he would text me and he would not let people off the boat unless he took my survey. So of course it skewed the data a little bit towards that private charter, but it was very, very helpful and I very much appreciated that. Uh, overall, I did 166 surveys in person, I had 81 online, and I had about 30 mailed in to me from the captains up and down the South Carolina coast. So uh, in summary of my results, I observed six fishing trips. I interviewed 14 captain and crew, and I, I gathered about two, 287 surveys. So pretty good for just me going around. Uh, and one, one year, roughly one summer, really, just kind of running around. So, um, so for my data analysis, I coded my qualitative data, which is categorizing those, uh, my notes, as well as my interviews. So a lot of listening to myself and transcribing uh, over and over again and coding through that. And I also did my questionnaire survey analysis through R. I did two well uh, sample t-tests to try and find correlations and relationships with to inform, to answer my hypotheses. So to start, my results actually ended up giving me a great density and distribution of, like, of the people who are coming fishing in South Carolina. As you can see, pretty wide distribution. And this is only the continental US. I actually had some people who were from international that were coming in. So they fell off the map because that's the time I had for <laughs> some of the world. So, um, and as you can see, there's a pretty large concentration, a hotspot in South Carolina. I think part of that might be skewed from the Carolina Sportsman uh, advertisement since it is a Carolina fishing page. So uh, that being said, wide distribution, which is pretty pretty exciting and also shows that tourism towards South Carolina. Uh, now for some descriptions of my data. 86% uh, of the survey takers were white Caucasian and then 83% were men, which goes with the literature that a lot of the demographic of the recreational fishing community is um, white, male, and middle-aged, which is also in my survey data as well. So you can see that distribution through there that uh, from 25 to 64 is about a majority of the survey takers. Now for the, also from my data, there was a, there was a high level of four-year degrees from my, the demographic of survey takers. So that was interesting as well. And then there was a high income level of survey takers too. So a lot of people who are making 100K plus. Now that being said, I was doing both surveying of head boats and private charters. But since I lived in Charleston, like I said before, it was easiest for me to go to Charleston Shem Creek area, which is a high number of private charter boats, which would probably skew this income level. Now for my hypotheses, I wanted to find out if catch rate is high, trip satisfaction will be high. And my second hypothesis, the more fish you take home, the better. So if you take a lot of fish home, fill your cooler, that would be a great fishing trip. And for my last one, whether a lower bag limit would decrease satisfaction. So that's really the important question for my, for my research. Now for the first one, um, greatly supported. As you can imagine, you hit, if you're on a boat all day and you don't catch anything, your satisfaction is pretty low. And that's what I saw in my observations as well as found in my interviews too. And, and it was also supported in the literature that catch rate is very important for driving trip satisfaction. Uh, it was also very paramount in my, or very evident in my, push, uh, my survey data as well. So 78% agreed that a fishing trip is not a success unless they catch a fish. 
For my second hypothesis, the more fish you take home, the more, the higher the satisfaction will be. Uh, I found this to not be supported. Now, this was maybe specific to black sea bass itself, but also some of the customers really kept talking about how they wanted to take some fish home. And the captains and crew also said the same thing. I kept hearing the uh, number three. They wanted their, their customers to have at least three to take home uh, from the, my qualitative data. Uh, that might be because there's a lot of out-of-towners and vacationers and they just want to have a few fish for dinner. So it also is supported actually in some of the literature as well that there was a study by Petering et al. that focused on black crappie and a black, black crappie fishery in a lake and they found that most anglers just wanted to take a few home for dinner. And that was kind of their, their target and their aim. This is also, you can sort of see that distribution in my survey data. As you can see, uh, majority say that they want, they agree with taking fish home, but my data didn't get at what number they were wanting to take home, what number they desired to take home. Now for my third hypothesis, I wanted to see if the lower bag limit would decrease, lead to a decrease in satisfaction. Uh, this was also not supported in my data, in my qualitative and quantitative data. Uh, most customers were not aware of bag limits. And that was true, that was evident in my interviews with captain and crew as well. They said that most people on board are relying on them to know what the rules are. Also, this may be very specific to black sea bass. So as I said in the beginning, black sea bass, uh, they weren't catching the bag limits to begin with because they're not catching the size. They're not catching 13 inch fish. They're mostly getting undersized fish and throwing them back. Uh, so I kind of want to talk a little bit about that, the size limits and the discard. There's a high level of discard in the black sea bass fishery. Um, a lot of little guys that come up. Now the limit is 13 inches. You're mostly seeing 12.9, 12.11, 11 or 12. So that's most of the fish that you're pulling up in these fisheries. Uh, I had a nice quote from one of the captains that they were the bag limit doesn't really affect them because they're not getting the size anyway. So if you increase the bag limit, it really doesn't matter to them. Now, so I wanted to do, review some highlights from my survey data. So when I asked survey respondents whether they think there should think there should be a bag limit for black sea bass, uh, most people agreed. They were in in favor of bag limits. They thought bag limits were were good. I think this is maybe some of the conservation messaging that has come about. Uh, that's just my opinion though. And so people do think that there should be bag limits. They think there should be rules according to, well, according to the survey respondents here. Uh, also, were they aware of the bag limit? Uh, the answer was no, for the most part. 56% didn't, weren't aware, and that goes back to what the captains and crew were saying. And when asked with an increase in the limit, would it increase satisfaction? Uh, most people didn't seem interested in that as well. So that was also found in my survey data. Uh, and then when I asked people what they thought of the current bag limit, as you can see, mostly neutral, relatively null answer or a null question and nullified the question. So uh, that goes back to that not being aware of what the current bag limit is anyway. This kind of is another graph to show that really seemed to be that catching a fish was the most important for driving trip satisfaction uh, for this survey. So some additional factors that I found in my research were the fight and the shark. That was a big one. Uh, Non-catch dependent factors and customer service were another thing that drives trip satisfaction, which is also ev evident in the literature too. Uh, the length of the trip dictated trip satisfaction. So that's like the demographic of who's on board fishing. And changing attitudes. That's a common theme I heard from my interviews with the fish, uh, the captain and the crew. So for the shark, this is important because the four higher fishery, when they're not catching enough or they're not being able to like bring home enough for their customers, they target sharks because they give a great fight. And so if they're trying to you know, have great customer satisfaction, you want, they, they want those great review, reviews on TripAdvisor, they go out and they target the sharks. And in South Carolina, there's a pretty great, pretty sufficient shark fishery, very well managed. And therefore they're going out there and they're giving their, fish, their customers a good time. Uh, Non-cash dependent factors, as you can imagine, seasickness, not great. That could affect your good time on a boat uh, when you're coming off feeling pretty green. Uh, the other thing is it's South Carolina in the summer, which is where like the, the season for recreational and poor higher fishing. So you're hot, 
might not be the best time on the boat if you're not very used to heat. Uh, but that being said, customer service was another one. I, I was on a couple trips and you could tell what boats really were trying to please their customers and which ones were just taking people out for a ride on the water. And this is a video, unfortunately it doesn't work, but it's a video of a mate who went around with a tiny octopus that they pulled up and he went around the entire boat showing them and people were excited and they were happy to be seeing this like cool little octopus. So they really cared about their customers on that boat. Oh, it is work. <laughs> Yay, he's super cute. And you hear someone else yell, come see, this, come see the octopus. So yeah, it really does help. Um, the other thing is the length of trip. So a lot of the trips that I was on were half day, three quarter day charters. So the demographic of, of, of that boat, probably a lot of tourists, vacationers, not serious fishermen going out on the water. So that would also dictate the results of my survey and kind of influence my survey results as well. That, you know, versus a full day charter, as you can see on the right, that might sort of dictate what kind of fishermen are out on those boats. Those are more serious fishermen, more cat, uh, target oriented towards catching and filling their bag limits. So that's a little bit um, something I'd like to change in the future if I were ever to replicate this, is to focus on the length of trip and then see and sort of replicate the survey data as well to see what, what sort of factors drive their trip satisfaction. Um, the other thing as, is attitudes, changing attitudes. That's something I heard about the demographic of fishermen overall coming to South Carolina has changed in the last couple of years. So it used to be that their people used to come from the upstate with their coolers, fish all day, fill their coolers and leave. And now it's mostly tourists that are on these boats. So that really has changed. And from a lot of the captains I talked to and crew, that was a big factor and something that would be interesting to look, to, look into further in the future. So in summary, do black sea bass bag limits affect trip satisfaction with, from my data? Uh, it says, look, I've found low bag limits would not affect trip satisfaction because maybe they're not catching the bag limits anyway. Uh, what factors drive trip satisfaction? Catch rate, high catch rate really seems to increase satisfaction as well as more consumable fish might not increase satisfaction. You know, they want that some of those fish home for dinner. Uh, some recommendations for the future for studies and policymakers is to look at the, into the effect of discard on trip satisfaction. That was really a, evidence in my observation. And the study, the length of the trip. So what's the difference between the fishermen that are on board a half day versus a full day charter and what they're targeting as well. So I wanted to thank my thesis committee, Dr. Annette Watson, Dr. Karen Goughlin, Dr. Matt Nolan, and John Carmichael from the South Atlantic Fishery Management Council. Uh, greatly thanks to the fishing captains and crew of South Carolina. They were really awesome and very helpful and supportive. And also the South Atlantic Fishery Management Council who funded my research and funded my research travel so I could run up and down the South Carolina coast. So, any questions? Thanks. Are there any questions in the room at this time? Thanks, Stacey. Uh, at the end, you mentioned there was some feedback that you'd heard about discards. Could you elaborate on that a little bit more? Yeah, so for the discards, that would be a lot of the fish that are being thrown back that are undersized. So that was what I heard in my interviews consistently through with the captain's crew and also with um, kind of just from through observations, just seeing the number of fish that are being thrown back into the water that are not, that are undersized and 13 inches or below, so. Um, you mentioned the uh, shark fishing as a backup for when the uh, target species weren't biting, which we've heard a lot up in HMS, a lot of four hire guys getting our permits for that reason. Were they primarily fishing for the sharks in state waters or were they going out to federal waters? Mostly state waters where I was observing it. Uh, that being said, I, I only got a few full day charters. I mostly was on those uh, half day, three quarters. So that really dictated the being in state waters. But from what I saw it was state waters, yeah. Thank you for your presentation, Stacy. For, I also have a question about the shark um, targeting. For, in most cases, were they retaining the sharks on board and doing lethal takes or were they doing catch and release? Mostly catch and release from what I observed. Uh, there were a few times where people wanted to keep the shark to try it, 
so that was some, some people did have that, had an interest in that. Did you see differences between in response rates or your um, satisfaction metrics from surveys from individuals who had successful trips versus surveys from individuals who had unsuccessful trips? Or it's success and measured by whether they caught a fish or not? I, I can't say that I really tease that out because okay. I, I didn't maybe remember which trips were where I saw everyone really sad sure. versus and how the response rates were to that. So um, that would be great to look into for the future though. I mean, so, yeah. Thanks. Uh, did you break down the satisfaction results from your surveys by race, age, or gender? I did start doing metrics on race, uh, mostly age and gender, uh, mostly age, not gender really, and not race. I did it also by location. That was a big part of what I looked at towards the end was location because uh, I didn't mention that I went to Myrtle's Inlet, which is in between uh, Myrtle Beach and Charleston. And that was kind of more of like an old school area where people and sort of focusing on that changing attitude. So Myrtle's Inlet was seemed to be like a stronghold of what South Carolina was 30 years ago. And I didn't really look into the age beyond that. So. Oh, good job, Stacy. Um, did you uh, did you get any interest from the captains and crews about the results of your surveys? And uh, were they interested in how better to improve for their trips and things? Yeah. So I actually presented at the South Atlantic Fishery Council meeting in June 2018, and a couple of the captains there are on the uh, council board. And then some of them were excited about it. Some of them were afraid that it would affect. Uh, bag limits and harvest limits. Uh, so kind of a mixed response to that, uh, particularly from the mid-Atlantic was worried that this could maybe potentially affect their fishery. Uh, but they were excited about the results. I have not published it, um, but <laughs> so, but hopefully maybe in the future. I think we have time for another question. If anyone uh, would like to ask. Okay. All right. Well, I don't see, um, any online questions. So uh, we'll just take a quick break and be back with our second presentation. So um, thank you much, so much, Stacey, for that talk. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, guys.